Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. It is your purchase and pricing email question line. For this or any other watch you see on any Watchbox platform, email me for pricing at tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Today, we are discussing the lovely 38mm stainless steel Omega Seamaster Aquaterra. The all-around water-resistant watch in the Omega Seamaster family is not a dive watch. This one is for surf and turf, a competent all-arounder that carries the torch from 1948 when the first Seamaster wasn't a dive watch, but a highly water-resistant all-around men's timepiece. This is its direct descendant. So in steel, 38 millimeters in diameter, 12.4 millimeters thick, from lug tip to lug tip, 44.6 millimeters with a 19 millimeter spacing in between the lugs. This is one of the unisex sized Aquaterras. As you can see, it wears beautifully on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist. Look at how those lugs are nowhere near the edge in this down the barrel shot. Also, over the top, you can see just how much clearance I've got, and I'm pulling the strap pretty tight. So I could recommend this watch for a wrist as small as 13 centimeters in circumference. Unisex indeed, or just for the dude who likes traditional sizes. It's also fairly thin. At 12.4 millimeters thick, this is one of the thinnest modern Omega watches, especially considering it's a tri-level coaxial automatic and 150 meters water resistant. We have a high grade, large rectangular scale alligator leather in anthracite with a folded edge, a lightly contrasting gray stitch, calfskin on the bottom, you could see it is a brand new Omega factory strap, no crimping, no gouging. We have satin and polish on a deployant clasp, which is a single fold with twin trigger release, and then a little crimping system, which allows us to take the strap, tuck it in, then you can tuck it under those two little lips there for an even more flush fit, and then all the excess length just sits underneath the strap, no need for minder loops, a very clean look. So a secure, and very clean clasp design. It's been with Omega since the early 2000s, and it's stuck around for a reason. It's great. Just like this case, liar style lugs. We have both the inward and the outward bevel. This case design's been seen on Speedmasters and Seamasters since the early 1960s. It's endured because it is beautiful. We have a satin finished mid case with a lengthwise satination. We have a little bevel mid case that's polished that flares at the lug tips. We have a crown with a combination of polish and media blasting. And then we have a conical bezel in high polish giving way to the second generation Omega Teak Deck concept. Generation one came out back in 2008. It was vertical teak deck striping. Generation 2 that you see here came out in 2017, and it was a lateral striping with different stroke weights for the individual stripes. We have blackened hands that are alternately satinated and polished. The same can be said for the faceted applique indices, which contrast gently but sufficient for excellent legibility against this soft silver white base. We have a faceted aperture framing the date down at six o'clock. And then you can see we have an applied Omega logo and marquee. Take a quick look, we'll do a loom shot here. The watch has plenty of luminescence and you will note all three hands are loomed. That should be universal on three hand watches. We have two secondary setting mechanisms, by the way, screw down crown, 150 meters. And Omega had the good taste not to put a depth rating on the dial. Now we have a system that allows us to hack the movement, stop the seconds, and set the watch precisely against a reference time. But we also have a quick set for the dates. You can rapidly cycle the date in case the watch runs down or you encounter an irregular length month. Screw that back in for security. We'll flip the watch over and you can see this is based on the caliber 8800 that you also see in the diver 300 meter. So what's going on? Well, automatic winding with the efficiency of hybrid ceramic bearings, 55 hour power reserve. We have a rugged system, a full balance bridge with a free sprung index for precision of adjustment, but also shock tolerance, anti-magnetic balance, balance staff, silicon hairspring, and escapement. So this watch is anti-magnetic to over 15,000 gauss, basically amagnetic. You can use it in any kind of magnetic field that you'll encounter at home or at the office, unless you work around particle accelerators or MRIs. Now the watch also has 35 pivot jewels, the quick set, as well as the stop seconds function, a single mainspring barrel. And let's talk a little bit about this 
Master Chronometer Certification, the METAS certification developed between Omega and the Swiss Federal Institute of Metrology. It is a six-position, fully cased-up test that encompasses everything the COSC does, but also adds winding efficiency, power reserve, water resistance, overall durability and shock resistance, and anti-magnetism. It is a comprehensive test of the full watch. Unless you think this is the fox guarding the hen house, anyone can certify a master chronometer if they meet the criteria, which is why Tudor recently began to do so. It beats away at 25,200 vibrations per hour, which is a swatch group standard for silicon hair springs. And then we have a tri-level coaxial, which is a double impulse system using both direct and indirect impulse. And instead of sliding contact between impulsed and impulsing surfaces, there is tangential contact. So reduced friction, reduced maintenance, and improved chronometry, as well as improved power reserve. George Daniels, the British independent watchmaking master, created this system in the 70s. Omega adopted it in the 90s, and today it has found its way throughout the line. It is the most exotic escapement you can purchase for under $50,000. Reach out to Team also at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.